you also want to believe so hard that you could take something that will not require you to change your lifestyle, right, right. but dramatically change the way you right, look right. and the way you feel. There's also the the factor of having disposable income too. Listen, if I have the if I have the extra the money, and it, and even if it gives me uh, half of a point zero five percent edge, but this is way. also after you're working out consistently. You're watching your diet. Yeah, yeah. You're no, watching true. your sleep. Yeah, no, true. I mean, that's. I mean, definitely. There's no way I would be wasting. It's like someone putting a decal on their car because they want to go faster. <laughs> that's the first thing they do is put a sticker. But I mean, if you want your car to look cool, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> and you can afford the decal, it doesn't matter. Of all the things you can do to positively affect your health, athletic performance, ability to build muscle and burn body fat, way down at the bottom of the list are supplements. They are largely a waste of time unless you're super advanced and have everything dialed in, in which case they can help maybe 1%. I want to believe, though, so I really <laughs> want to believe. I'm glad you brought this up because we we recently had a live call or ask us uh, a good question around creatine, right? Like, uh, and feeling it. New first time, uh, like, lifter or relatively new lifter um, have, has heard everybody uh, touting creatine, decides to get it, and is like, confused on i don't think i feel it or i'm not sure if i feel it i'm so glad you brought that up because of all the supplements that exist for that are ergogenic right ergogenic type supplements so. performance enhancing build muscle that kind of stuff creatine's the best it has the most studies it's got proven. literally thousands of human studies it's proven to work and even <laughs> even creatine you take creatine yeah. It's not going to blow your mind. No. Um, supplements are largely a waste of time. And for for the, for ninety nine percent of people watching this, uh, supplements are a waste of time to focus on. Now the problem is that the the industry is fueled by the profits that come from supplements, and I get this. Um, most of the money made in the fitness and health space comes from pills and powders. So it's natural that the information that we get from the health and fitness space is going to come through that lens, right? If I'm going to write articles and blogs and do sh podcasts and do media, it, a lot of it's gonna be directed towards helping me sell my products. Mm -hmm. So it's this distorted view of what's important, what's not important. I mean, and the truth is literally, if you looked at a, a pie of all the things that could affect your health and improve your health and your fitness and all that stuff, 98.9% uh, would be your lifestyle, your sleep, your diet, your exercise. A lot of free stuff. And it, <laughs> It's and then one point one percent would be supplements. The only time supplements make a big difference is when you actually have a nutrient deficiency, which um, most people don't take supplements for that at all. Or nor do they have uh, nutrient deficiencies that need um, solving. Usually, right when that was, when that's the case, it makes a big difference. But it doesn't make uh, it, it's just one of those things. You know, this conversation also highlights like because the kid was asking about not feeling it and not sure if it was working. But it also highlights why the largest uh, category of supplement sales is pre-workouts. You feel it. Because it's, it's the one, it is the supplement that you, and why the game is just keep pumping more, more caffeine, more caffeine. I Higher remember when pre-workout first got hit the market. Well, I, I, I should backpedal first because I know there was things like Jack 3D, the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde stuff. Like there was a few companies out there that was pumping pretty high uh, caffeine, but I've watched, you know, it go up and up and up. Like it started off being like 100, 100 well, milligrams to 200 milligrams of caffeine. They had ephedra back in the day and then they got rid of that and then had to go to the caffeine. And so anything uh, to equate towards that kind of feeling had to be a high. Well, yeah. Caffeine. I remember when the pre-workout market. So the first, the first actual supplement kind of brand that marketed itself as a pre-workout. By the way, I, I'm a, a supplement uh, fanatic and I have probably an unhealthy relationship with supplements. So I'm communicating through through that, right? So I, I understand. I get the whole, I get the market. I understand what's happening. Now, I remember as a kid, there was a product called Ultimate Orange. Yeah. This was the first product to be marketed as a, as a pre-workout and it had ephedra in it, ephedra caffeine. It had the ECA stack, ephedra caffeine aspirin. I mean, you take it, it's like, you're going to feel it. Um, but it wasn't super popular yet. It was really hardcore. People kind of took it. And then it was like super pump 250 came out. And what they did with some of these pre-workouts is, and it was brilliant marketing. It was so brilliant, right? The classic before and after, right? 30 days is what you could look like. 60 days is what you could <laughs> look like. And what they did with these pre-workouts that was brilliant is they showed before pump, after pump. Yeah. So they took muscular guys because yeah. the more muscle you have and the leaner you are, the more dramatic you look when you get a pump. I mean, I look like I gained 15 pounds of lean body mass when I get a pump sometimes, right? Yeah. 
By the way, if you see a picture of me on Instagram, it's with a pump. It's never flat. By the way, too, people are always arguing the wrong point when they see things. I get sent things like, this, can this be true or this isn't real? It's like, no, it's actually probably really that guy, and he probably really is the course of a month or whatever like that. Yeah, right. You can dramatically change the way somebody looks with carbs, water, a pump, and lighting. Yeah. I mean, dramatically change Yeah, but let's, let's also go, let's also step back for a second. What they do a lot of is they take a shredded you know, presentation stage. Yeah, yeah right backstage. Yeah. And they say, gain a bunch of body fat. I got pitched. That was, I got pitched that all Slouch the time. your posture. And that, you, we'll make that the before picture. When you go to shows, okay, so uh, when you get into the competitive space, shows are uh, dominated by supplement companies that basically, if it wasn't for supplement companies, bodybuilding shows wouldn't happen. They are the ones that sponsor yeah. and advertise. So when you see these backdrops and you see all these brands back there, they've all donated thousands and thousands of dollars for these, these shows to even happen. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they send a representative from that company that is in the audience watching. And they are looking for somebody in the top five who's good looking good looking top five and then they approach them afterwards and they try and get them to attach to their brand so they don't even have to they never use their product before they got shredded that way without even knowing the brand they come up and they say hey we'd like to sponsor you as an athlete pay you to advertise one of the and the okay yeah that sounds great i was a broke bodybuilder this sounds like a great idea i need money anyways so you agree to it and then one of the first campaigns they do is here we are you're already shredded so let's take those photos and let's get you in this week if you can and that's the after yeah and this becomes your after and then and go then, ahead and put weight on and that'll be the before yeah and then you and then we take photos after you put on 15 20 pounds and then you switch those and it's like wow dude got hella shredded no actually he was shredded and then gained body fat and yeah. they switch those the other thing that you, they do is they'll go after someone who's got a lot of muscle memory who kind of got out of shape in which case they can get in shape really quick or like you said adam there's a lot you could do with lighting and super strict everything and crazy stuff and Yes, you can make people look different, but what they do with these pre-workout campaign, which was brilliant, is they showed pre-pump, post-pump. So they said, here's John before the workout, and he's standing there, and he's, you know, he's cold. I mean, you can tell he has a lot of muscle, but he's kind of cold, no pump. And then this is afterwards, and he's got a pump, and it looks dramatic. And then they're like, you know, super pump 250 or ultra pump or whatever the supplement was. And it was brilliant marketing, and people bought it, and you're right, you can feel it. But these supplements do so little. They do so little for for your success. They can be fun to take. You know, you can protein powders can help if you don't get enough protein in your diet and all that stuff. But man, I I, I got to keep communicating this. You know, in, by, I know we're sponsored by supplement companies. They mm -hmm. know we're very mm -hmm. honest about this. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why our, our audience trusts us. I'm not gonna lie. They don't make that big of a like. No supplements yeah, make that big yeah. of a difference. They just don't. I just feel like no matter how many times we say it, it's just it's the human psychology is so much more powerful. This I is know. always going to yeah. work. And you, I mean, I, I catch myself even like looking at a picture and looking at like you know an obviously whatever you guys just described or it's doctored or whatever. But I'm still like drawn to it. And I'm like, oh, what what is this? And it's just like. I don't know that I guess I would compare it to like you're going to a uh, a magician like you're watching a magician on stage and you know there's a trick to this and you know that like there's sleight of hand you know there's like you know all this logical explanation for what's going on but yeah, at the same time you're just sucked like, in. Whoa. Oh, you also <laughs> you know magic I think it's real. You also want to believe so hard that you could take something that will not require you to change your lifestyle. Right, right. But dramatically change the way you right, look right. and the way you feel. Yeah. Uh, Western medicine feeds into this as well with mm -hmm. how we use drugs and medications and stuff. Totally. Um, and so it's, you want to believe that. There's also the the factor of having disposable income too, right? I mean, that, that that's kind of how I've always looked at it is like, listen, if I have the, if I have the extra, the money and it, and even if it gives me uh half of a 0.05% edge and I, and I, it doesn't hit my pocket. Yeah, but this is way. also after you're working out consistently. You're watching your diet. Yeah, yeah. You're no, watching true. your sleep. Yeah, no, true. I mean, that's. I mean, definitely. There's no way I would be wasting. It's like someone putting a decal on their car because they want to go faster. <laughs> that's the first thing you do is put a sticker. But I mean, if you want your car to look cool, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> and you can afford the decal, it doesn't matter. Got you know little saying? flames, you know. I mean, I, I've been saying the the, the spoiler analogy forever, and it, it is like throwing a. a it's like putting, actually, it's like putting a racing steering wheel on your car. That's yeah. even better. Now I'm serious. What's up, y'all? Here's the giveaway today. The RGB Bundle. Maps Anabolic, Mass Performance, Maps Aesthetic. Bundled together for free. Here's how you win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section. 
you'll hear from us, and we'll let you know that you won free access to the RGB bundle. Also, we got a sale going on right now. Two bundles on sale. The first bundle is the Skinny Guy bundle. This is MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Aesthetic, the No BS six-pack formula, the Intuitive Nutrition Guide, and the Occlusion Training Guide. All of that, 50% off. The other bundle that's on sale is the Fit Mom bundle. This includes MAPS Anywhere, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS It, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. Again, that's also 50% off. You can find both of these by clicking on the link at the top of the description below to get the 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. I had this, yeah. this, I totally did not think about this until right now. I had this, I was driving the other day and I was driving fast. At what point, like how fast of a car or how nice of a car do you have, do you need to have to justify getting driving gloves? I really want gloves. <laughs> I saw some of the other I day. Really want, I really want driving gloves. <laughs> why? Why do you wear driving gloves? Why do people wear them? Uh, well, there's two know. reasons why. There's two reasons why. And driving slow. Well, I mean, one, I mean, you get the oil on your hand, and so it will t uh, tarnish like nice steering wheels. Mm -hmm. So you have like really nice suede okay, okay. or really real, real wood. So in like your Bentley or whatever like that, you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to tarnish, tarnish that from the oils. And then also you get a better grip on the wheel. You know what I'm saying? So How, what are you doing with the steering wheel, bro? What, <laughs> you know, what, bro. what point? What point can I justify putting my gloves on? Bro, this morning I was driving. I want to get a pair. I'm gonna bring that. I'm gonna make that popular. I, I got a loan. My head. Is there a rule, Doug? Is there a driving glove? I don't think so. You I have think, a pair, don't you? I do not. Uh, but now that you mention it, you should do it. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think you need to have a reason. Just that, do it. Yeah. Have, you, have you seen the Ferrari shoes? Like like some of these guys wear oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. are just like all pointy and narrow yeah, and yeah. like you know red, just like their car. And I've always thought that was funny. It was rocking like, and that was actually Ferrari one. There's Ferrari so shoes, Ferrari jackets, so the, the, the hat and everything like that, and then not have one. Like, I just think that's real. Bro, if I got in, <laughs> if I did, if I got in someone's car yeah. and then they'd put on gloves to drive, I'm gonna do it. My that's friend you, used Matt, to have like, a keychain that was a Ferrari. Yeah. The top selling driving gloves on Amazon, and, and go ahead and order me a pair on the company. Bro, no, you're not. Right yes. now. You, I swear okay, to God, the I'm move gonna is you I get seriously want to get a pair. I'm going to get, get you shoes. an ascot as yeah. well. So yeah. you're like a scarf that goes you get around the ascot. Your neck. You, I actually have that already. You get so the, uh, yeah. the, the, the the key ring, yeah. like so that my, one of my friends did that, and we used to go out to to the bars or whatever, and he would have like a keychain of just like a Ferrari, and like would just like throw his keys on the bar. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you're such an asshole. You know, you know <laughs> what though? Believes you. We grew up. Hey, you know what though? We grew up in the era of worthless car accessories. Because remember when like car racing yeah. got popular, and you had like the fast Japanese cars yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And there was all these like you could get like a short shifter. I had it on all. your 170 pound. I, 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 I had I had a short I had a short shifter. Than the, I mean, the, all the stuff is adds up on racing in the quarter mile, right? So that's where that's how it's, so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which, which I never did, right? So <laughs> okay, let's uh, do the. Bro, I swear to God, if you wear them, I, I swear to God, I will, bro. I want to do the, the ones the on the tobacco the, color, the right? Uh, I think. Leather oh, those ones. brown. The, actually, you know, what? let's yeah. do those brown ones though. The top left. I oh, top is, that the, is that the highest rated? Uh, boy, let me see. Oh, there's red ones. Go to the red ones. It'll match my interior. Go, the red, go over. <laughs> okay. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. I'm, okay, I'm gonna go back. Go oh, back. Oh man. man, so much pressure here. Oh no, oh, no. What'd you do? Uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna be fine. I'm okay. There we go. See, the, see red the red. One. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh yes, <laughs> stupid. Get me those. I'm assuming you want the. Extra I love how it has the yeah? knuckles cut yeah, out. Yeah, why? Out. Why are All the right. knuckles cut out? Because oh, uh, to to free the knuckle. Yeah, oh, yeah, you, you gotta, must free the knuckle. Yeah, yeah. free the nipple. In case I guess. you, yeah, I guess you, in case you, you backhand your assistant or something in the back because you're that pretentious. Let me yeah. see the white ones for Justin. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, hook me up because yeah, oh I got white and black. I think they go, should be bro. sequined. <laughs> That's what I was. They match you into your interior. Of, Let's go. Bunch of weirdos. Can we start now? A you see me? Shh, now you don't, bro. You have yeah. a, you can do this too. I'm not going to work gloves. Let me see drive. the other colors for Sal. We're getting one pair for everybody. No, I don't want car yeah. drive. Doug, what do you want? Doug, get the brown. Oh, the look brown at that. Look. These are black with wow. red stitching. Oh, oh those. Oh, That's those. the ones you want right there. Those are the ones I want. I. I, I want those. Doug, you get the brown matchy. ones. Justin, get the white ones. Sal yeah. doesn't get to be participate. Yeah, that's all right. You guys all have the same color. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. You, don't get to <laughs> you, don't get to you don't get to participate in this. No. Thing. I won't be wearing no gloves when I drive. Yeah. So it is still a thing. I mean, obviously, they sell them on there. How many reviews? It's got a lot of reviews, too, no? Yeah, almost 1,200 reviews. People okay. wear, people so there's wear at least 1,200 people hey, are down. People wearing to work out. I'm going to order lattes just like with those on. When I, when I, this more actually, so so I'm, gonna start I have a loaner car right now because I had to take my car in to get some noise fixed or whatever. Yeah. So I'm driving this like small, like 330, you know, BMW 330 or whatever. Yeah. And it's coming to work and I was late to be on a podcast. I you know how fun it is to drive a small car. Dude, I was power sliding over here on the side. Of the car. <laughs> Especially when it's not yours. <laughs> <laughs> you know how fun it is to drive a small car when it's not yours, dude. Bro, 
I scared the shit because there's a little homeless encampment underneath the uh, um, the overpass over there. Mm. So I power slapped underneath that. Dude. Everybody's Get like, nice woke everybody up. Yeah. Alarm. Oh yeah, it was a good time. Dude, that guy. It's good fun. I'm so excited. I'll, and, I'll reinverse the company, Doug. Go ahead and oh get man. those, please. Anyway, so speaking that. of supplements, so here's there's two things that got me on this topic. One was that stupid ad you sent us from what's his oh, name? No, Tony oh, Horton. Tony Horton. Oh, yeah. Did you know? Okay, so okay. I, he he got what was the disease he got? What was the condition? It's the one that Bieber had. The disease. Ramsey. It's Ra what's it called? Ramsey or something? Something like that. It's the one that Justin Bieber had where you yeah. lose Justin yeah. Bieber. I didn't even know Justin Bieber had that. Yeah, mm -hmm. he did. So he yeah. got- Ram Ramsey Hunt. Ramsey Hunt. Yeah. It Syndrome. It, uh, paralysis, neurological? Paralysis in the face. Yeah. And yeah, and it had yeah, neurological- Looks like Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy Disorder, almost. Yeah. And he, I mean, he was like in a wheelchair. He like lost all kinds of- uh, all kinds But anyway, the, his muscle the, mass ad, was the ad, and it's a brilliant- It's a brilliant ad, but it's so ridiculous. It's like this this attractive girl, and she's like, you know, he, you know, there's this compound. That did you, no, she starts off, yeah. did you ever wonder what happened to the P90X yeah, what guy? Happened to yeah. him? And then he has a crazy story. Yes. Yeah, you know, and then they go down this thing like, uh, like he lost all this muscle, and like you know, it was hopeless and blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And there's this but, compound. There's this compound that builds muscle without working out, and it's based on. And she goes, "It's based on actual science." Of our actual, lab. not <laughs> none of that other kind of science. Yeah, yeah. Actual, not, yeah. not that, yeah. that P ninety X science. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know that the, propaganda you know, science. You know what the compound okay. is? The compound is. It's first of all, it's a plant protein powder. Okay, great. It's is that a, what it was? Yes, and they added wow. HMB. HMB is a metabolite of leucine. I've talked about this before. And yeah. yes, there are studies that show that if you give it to old people that they build a little bit of muscle because it's a signaler of muscle growth, just, just, just like the amino acid leucine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've taken HMB five bazillion times. <laughs> it, you, you, you don't notice it. You Minimal. just don't notice it. No, like, you don't notice even, it. Yeah, not even all. And really. if your protein intake is high, it doesn't do anything. But they what a they, cocksucker, huh? I know. If you didn't make enough money already on P90X, you still got to be scamming people when you're like 65 years old. Yeah, and do you remember? Come on, guy. Do you remember it's, the P90X it's a pure workouts, hustle, dude? Yes. Do you remember them? My dad used to do them. I remember. I remember. I was an a, an early trainer. It was like when I was 20 years old, and my dad bringing it to me and showing it to me and being like, "Oh, so he's like ranting and raving all about yeah. it." I'm like, Dad, you do see it because it comes with a diet. Basically, it comes with like a 1500 calorie diet and plyometrics six days a week. I'm like, yeah, yeah no shit, dad, you lost weight. <laughs> you yeah. know say you literally Aggressive starved your body and is. you went from being like a couch potato to doing plyometrics in your living room. And you I know? feel terrible, but I lost weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. clients would bring it to me and they're like, oh man, I, I couldn't even make it through half the work. I almost threw up. Is yeah. it great? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, no, it's so not. Get a bucket is awesome. So here's the second thing, right? So last night I was on with the NCI coaches and one of the guys on there, love this guy. He's on there all the time. He brings up this new compound that the biohackers have been talking about because supposedly it's good for longevity. It's called spermidine. Okay, is it real? So that's the name of it. Is it in the name? Like the name is that's, that uh, in the compound? Justin's Call of Duty call sign. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yes. I've seen him. I've seen him game him. Spermidino. <laughs> Spermidino. Hey there, Spermidino. It's so Spermidino in my face. That's what I think. Oh I my said. god. <laughs> It's, it's, my it's an chat. active compound. <laughs> so the guy brings it up and he's like, I've heard about this. It's supposed to be good for longevity. I'm like, spermidine? I'm like, huh, I wonder where that's from. I looked it up. Sure enough, it's a compound found in semen. And that's where they get the name spermidine. It's also found in food. It's a compound found in foods. And there are some animal studies that show that it might help with mitochondrial health yeah. and maybe longevity. Mm. Doesn't mean you should take it because who knows what it you know what's going to do whatever. But anyway, it's just a new supplement and it's called spermidine and they find it in semen. Any okay? Any since we're we're Scientists ragging on weird, since we're dude. ragging on supplements you today. Send the study to your wife. Yeah. Honey, what, this like, is what what drew him in that direction? Is uh, my because question. I guess the well, these these biohackers are talking about it. They'll do anything. I uh, well, I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Any any predictions? On, I mean, I think a long time ago we predicted like the the if there's going to be a big breakthrough in supplements, it's going to be somewhere around the myostatin blocker yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. that. Do you still stand by that? That that'll be the probably the the, the next well, biggest, a drug. Yeah, yeah. If they do that, my God, when they when they experiment on animals and they they mess with that myostatin, the muscle they grow is it would make it would make anabolic steroids look like Flintstone vitamins, mm. like nothing. So yeah, that'll be the bet. When, if they figure that out, that's like a switch. It's literally like a switch you turn. I mean, on. what what about like peptides though? Would you put that in? The, what category would you put that in? Uh, peptides have real effects in the body. I mean, these are real. I mean, drugs. so so do the supplements, or else they wouldn't exist. Well, right? so, what I like mean, if we were comparing them, no, I wouldn't do. I would not do uh, peptides without doctor supervision because they have real effects on hormones in the body, and that could be good or bad depending on the individual. 
Um, whereas supplements largely do nothing often. So go ahead and take them, I, I guess, uh, as much as you want. Um, although some do have lots of effects like stimulants and stuff, but no peptides, I would do, do doctor supervision. But again, even anabolic steroids are not going to give you all these crazy results without diet and exercise. Even that, even the most effective ergogenic, uh, illegal black market, whatever, um, is still not going to make you, you could give, and I remember learning this as an early trainer. I thought, Bodybuilders and athletes look the way they did because of steroids. That's what I thought. Yeah. Until I started working in gyms, and I and fifty percent of the trainers take a bunch of anabolic it's, it's, steroids. Yeah, I say, yeah. until, until oh, I, I started taking steroids, people and take I realized steroids. this sucks. Yeah, and they're just like super puffy and bloated, and they like were never gaining muscle. I'm like, why? Dude, like, what's happening? Dude, like, I, I thought it was like I, I had a crazy. My first experience with steroids, I got, and I was a skinny kid. I got, I got leaner. I got pissed. It was like <laughs> I the whole point of me taking wow. them back then was I wanted to because your diet it, wasn't great. You yeah, training. yeah, no, of course, you know, I just I I didn't couldn't figure that out. Dude, yet. I worked with this guy. I won't say his name, but he. This was back when I owned my. I had uh, ownership of a gym down in Palm Spring area, and so Mexico's real close, right? So he would go down there with his trainer, and they'd come back with all these steroids. And this other trainer was kind of a bodybuilder, had everything dialed in. I mean, you could tell that he would get on gear and stuff. This other guy was this sales guy that worked for me, and he was kind of into working out, kind of not, ate garbage. Anyway, he goes on, and he was a kamikaze kind of guy. So this is the kind of guy that, you know, if you go out drinking with him, he'll, he like, he just goes he crazy. Just goes no regard nuts. for his health, right? Yeah. He was taking doses of anabolics that all of us were like, bro, you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to kill yourself. This is dangerous. Like, what are you doing? He gained like seven pounds, maybe seven pounds of muscle, maybe, and bloated. He didn't look like, and I remember that's when I was like, oh, okay, this stuff is not magic. Yeah. Like you know, since we're talking about steroids and supplement peddling, I feel like we should bring up your boy. Hmm? Yeah. Who? Who's Michael who's Hearn? His boy? Well, oh, what about him? Have you seen him right he now? He's crazy. Dude, that guy, I don't care if you're on all the steroids. That guy looks amazing. Well, he's he's got, like a superhero. He is a superhero. But dude. why, why it at this point, why sense. continue to deny the anabolic use? Maybe like it's, that, maybe he's me, honest, it, dude. To me, it stop it. Well, hey, stop it. You've met pro athletes. You've met people that blow your mind. You never know, bro. The guy's like seventy years old and no, he still no, looks he's amazing, he's dude. Not <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking old now, dude. He's, I mean, he's like what, sixties, fifties, or sixties? He's uh, he's in his somewhere. 50s. In there. He's fifty three. Yeah, oh, he's hey, not bro. old. He's no, old right? He's old as fuck. He's, he's dinosaur. Say, but he's not, anyway. He no, looks amazing. If, could you p please pull up his Instagram, the most his most recent photos that he's got? He just did like some shoot or something like that, and it, he popped. Bro, look, here's the deal. He popped up in my feed. Maybe, well. maybe you're right. Maybe not. Maybe you're right. But boy, genetics can be crazy. Jack Lalanne in his seventies. He okay. Yeah, he so, has all of it. He has the he genetics. He has the work ethic, and he has the anabolics. Like it's not. It, my point is not to take that away. Like, his physique is amazing, even for somebody who takes all the steroids. I in the know, world. but dude, I don't know. Do, okay, do you know what Ronnie Coleman looked like before he took anabolic steroids? I do. Not like this guy. Oh, what page are you on? What? That's not it. That's not his. That's not his main Instagram, is it? Bro. Yeah, this is main one. Bro, uh, Ronnie Coleman. Oh, I'm blocked from that one. It's his other. It's his uh, training one. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I don't know why he blocked me. Yeah, that's how, part of why I'm talking shit is... right now because I never did anything or said anything about him ever or ever commented on stuff. And he's he, a nice I, guy. I, I've to been blocked. Yeah, well, fuck him. I mean, because no. <laughs> he no, blocked nice he guy. blocked me, and I never said any shit about Michael Hearn. You must ever. have. No, yeah. I didn't. I never. When have I ever talked about him? I or don't know, or man. maybe you were in a bad mood. And I've never. No, no, not at all. Well, so Ronnie Coleman yeah. would get top fifteen in the Ooh, Olympia when he was natural. Okay, you could pull up pictures of Ronnie Coleman. I've seen him. Top he fifteen natural, and he was bigger than him for sure. Massive. So I don't know, man. Genetics are crazy, dude. I don't know. So who knows? And he's strong as fuck. It's, I, it just doesn't make sense. Matt, when he was 19 years old, Michael Hearn was a powerlifting champion, judo champion, California judo champion. That's Ronnie Coleman natural right there. Pull him up? Right at the top. That's not Ronnie Coleman he, out there, is it? Yes. That's him as a teenager, bro. Wow. Natural. You yeah. know when he took anabolic steroids? Yeah. This whole story. He, he tells a true any. story. I mean, I, I know he's um, amazing. That was him natural. That's natural right there. Yeah, I still, I still, and then he got on gear, and then he looked like, I mean, obviously, Ronnie Coleman. Nobody comes close. So you, you, you still believe there's a possibility that Michael I think there's a possibility because I've seen some. Crazy okay, give me a percentage possibility. Then what do you think? Like one in a million? Like I'll uh, give you that. I think he has the one in a million genetics. So I would say that the possibility is fifty fifty. Is what I would say. Oh wow, you think it's that close of yeah. a chance? Because he's not. Mm -hmm. I mean, he does look insane, dude. He looks crazy, but 
He's always looked like that. He's been and he's got crazy strength for his size, even like even for his size. He's Michael Hearn is hella strong. Yeah, no, he's hella strong. Yeah, I don't. I know. mean, to me, it, it doesn't like take Viking any parents or what, bro. Have you seen his little boy? Yeah, his little boy. No, I haven't. You can tell he's got the. I he's mean, got he's, the jeans, he's got the dude. jeans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His, his little boy already looks like just looks like he's gonna. Yeah, be I super mean, muscular. it's there's it's really wild how crazy these genetics can go. What's his mm -hmm. name? Who is that football? player? I don't believe it. He, I mean, he Herschel came up. Walker. Herschel Walker. Yeah. You ever seen Herschel Walker at fifty uh, something dude, years he's old? Jacked. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. insane. Does, it looks better than I could ever look well, in his fifties. Bo Jackson. I mean, Bo Jackson back in the day. Yeah, but I feel like I mean the Ronnie Coleman that Ronnie Coleman picture blows my mind because I haven't seen that one before. I've seen Ronnie Coleman before and I don't, I don't know. I would question if that's one of his ones before steroids. Or it not. is. Is it? Yeah. That picture, that yeah. actual picture. We yeah. Just the one at? that Doug pulled up because I, I've seen, you could look at him post and pre steroids and there's a difference. Well, for yeah, sure. no, of course. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's you a know monster. who else was crazy looking before they took gear? Kai green. Kai Green used to compete naturally and he looked crazy and was muscular. Now he obviously looked totally different afterwards. But he looked. Uh, I, he looked you're cool. also missing one other fact too. The guy is 53 years old too. I mean, there's an, there's another part that is like, well, how's Ronnie Coleman look right now? Well, that's he hurt himself, bro. He, <laughs> that's messed up. <laughs> yeah. he, Brutal. He messed his spine up. Yeah. You know who? Okay, so Jack Elaine at 70, and now Jack Elaine. No one's gonna argue he took steroids. Okay, right. Jack Elaine at 70 years old for his birthday pulled rowboats full of 70 total 70 people and swam from oh, shore to alcatraz yeah, yeah yeah pulling with his teeth and his hand and his feet were cuffed legend, dude. He was and a that's legend. recorded yeah. when he was 50 i think he was 50 he set the world record in pull-ups and push-ups that took was a decade so you say 50 50 justin where are you out on it i know you're not like a steroid <laughs> expert guy yeah but, i mean know, me I do not want your being opinion. like in your guy's world i just look at him as a specimen like there's got to be some some enhancements to that, though. I don't know. I just can't. It's hard for me to see somebody that, like, super genetically gifted. I mean, obviously, like, Ronnie Coleman, that looked ridiculous to me. So I would give it, like, a, uh, I'd say, like, more on the 80-20 side. 80% uh, he's probably on something. Yeah. 20, yeah. Has anybody Doug, tried you're the only one at advanced age, so what would you <laughs> but say? But, I mean, that should, to him, <laughs> he should say? as a compliment, Being somebody right? who knows what it's like to work out at that age. Yeah, uh, he's a different animal. I couldn't answer that. Yeah. I, I wonder, has he done drug tests? He's done drug tests in the past when he competed, but has he? Has you anybody know what's so funny about that? Those like I, I'm on anabolics, and I could time my my drug test to make people think that I'm not on steroids. That's true. It, it, like that's by the way, that is like the 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 most you know uh, you know who does that? What's the other? I mean Lance Armstrong. What's the guy that we had on our show? <laughs> Every that, drug test. <laughs> what's the name? What's yeah, the What's the guy on our show that we had a long time ago who doesn't Romano? like us anymore? No, 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 no. Who oh. doesn't like us anymore? Oh, doesn't like us. Oh, yeah, okay. remember we did Joe the three? Donnelly. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Joe Donnelly did that right. Guys, yeah, he lied about being that guy is like taking all yeah. kinds of stuff, and then all you have to do yeah. is time your your cycle. I mean, uh -huh. I, I mean, I, I take I take my shot once a week. If I were just to uh, prolong my shot by ten days, you I would look like I have terrible testosterone because yeah. it goes all the way back down. So well, yeah. Was, yeah, all athletes. I mean, you know, in the football world, they do that all the time. You know, it's like they time it out so they they miss their <laughs> they do your drug test. Like, well, you're yeah. not on steroids, but there's a lot of other stuff we see here. <laughs> nothing to do with muscle building. Here, weird. But what else are you taking, yeah. dude? Yeah, yeah. So, I don't I don't know, man. There's, there's, it's crazy. Well, speaking of legends, whatever. I, did you guys see that uh, Michael Jordan? I guess hasn't been able to sell his like amazing mansion. Bro, house. he's been trying to sell that for 2012. Yeah. How wait? Since how, 2012, nobody will buy. How it. much? Well, I think it's what like what they do. It's some very specific number that adds up to 23, but it's like. Twelve million. No, you're right. It's it's a, it's a very specific number. It's either it's either twenty three. It's either twenty three million for his number, or it has it has a significant. No, it adds up to it. So it's on the market for fourteen point nine million. Sorry, fourteen now. Yeah, but it might yeah. have been. Well, it 20. dropped a, a bunch originally. Of times, it was like twenty nine million. Twenty nine. Okay. Yeah. So no twenty three. So here's the thing, though. So the whole thing, and I've actually. I've been there. Like I, I like I used to. Oh, you seen it? Yeah, because it's it's in Deerfield area, and I used to go to school there. So Chicago, drive, Chicago. We drive there, through there all the time in this suburb, and um, it, it huge gates like uh, twenty three big, you know, bold, mm -hmm. and then there's like a um, where the security guys are, like with this this whole like setup for them. But like this <laughs> compound's like enormous, and you can't even really see it unless you're like flying above it. Um, but the thing is, it's such, it's so specific 
to Michael Jordan. Like I think that's the problem. So that's oh. so I I watched a whole YouTube thing on it. Like it's too custom. Someone that and, and someone broke it all down, and that's exactly what they they said was just like you you need to be a first of all you need to be close to it. Well, you don't have to be a billionaire, but you need to be a, a hundred millionaire yeah. to even afford the house. And like and, an insane fan of Michael Jordan, not yeah, just like a regular. Yeah, fan. because the whole thing is custom to him. Yeah, so it's like you got to want like he's you know, throwing in his own like. Uh, Every single shoe. Yeah, yeah. If you, buy, if you for, buy it, you get every shoe. You get all the shoe. And it's like, you know, it's, I mean, it's novelty and it's cool, but like, it's it, if you want to live in a house and pay that much money, like, you're not going to want it to be somebody else's vision and dream. No, unless you're a, a unless you're filthy rich and a diehard fan. And it's yeah. like, for you, it'd be like, it'd be like a collector's thing. Yeah. It's not even like you want to live in it. Like and then you, even then, you collect it. Nobody wants to buy it from you, so you're <laughs> fucked. Wasn't yeah. there a house in California that was like one of the most expensive? Yeah, the record was. It was- uh, 100 million or something? 150 million? Yeah, I, Doug can look it up. What the most expensive house sold. So I, you know, I just, you know, what just came out is the, um, you know, the show I always let Max watch with me, the- um, Sunset selling, sunset. Right? <laughs> oh, so, Katrina and I was, or Max and I always get caught watching it. You know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> they have a new one out. It's it's uh, so the the uh, Oppenheimer group or whatever their name of the guy the two. Oh, the two I watch this like so. A, now they've moved down to so they, something. They have Orange County now. Orange County, yeah. yeah. So the Orange County one and the very first episode, the first house they tour is a hundred million dollar house mm -hmm. on the coastline, and that. it was sick. now. What's the most expensive? Sick crazy house you guys have ever walked through walked through yeah mm. tony tony robbins well yeah oh yeah, yeah tony robbins crazy. yeah what was his health valued at <laughs> i mean uh boy i don't recall i mean 60 million maybe i mean i think it's more than that because he remember he built the bunker which is yeah. as yeah. expensive or more it's more expensive than the so, actual house so my dad well, so that, that had right. to have been the most expensive. my dad worked on a house with the crew because at one point he developed a name for himself with the stone work that he did and they worked <clears> on a house in atherton that this was back in i want to say 2000 early 2000s so the house was 50 million then so who knows what it was it's worth now yeah but i walked through that house and it was it wasn't that it was so big that was crazy about it it was that every room so the doors that went to the bedroom mm -hmm. were taken from a uh, like a 10th century church in Italy or something like that. Yeah. And then there was this one room where the walls and the ceiling was made of wood hard uh, and it was hand carved. So it was like that. Every room you walked into was ridiculous. The yeah. stuff that they had in it, it was insane. Yeah, I, I feel uncomfortable everything. living yeah. in a house like that. I mean, yeah. I mean, Hearst Castle would be cheaters way to say that. Yeah, but that's like, true. Uh, but. Also, like I was doing a job, and I think I had brought this up before for Clint Eastwood's house, and so it was, and it was legit huge, like probably in the ten million kind of range mm -hmm. uh, there. I think it was near Pebble Beach kind of area, um, but uh, it was it was in, and I felt like so uncomfortable, you know, because you got to put like things over your shoes, and like of course he wasn't there, you know, it was just like somebody else that was kind of managing it for him. But yeah, I, there I was, was kept looking for him. There was a I, I mean, shower I, that was in this house that was the size of it was like the size of a bedroom, and it was a shower, and the water would come through the stone in this in the roof. So you turn it on the ceiling. So you turn it on, sick. and it'd be like. You know, like this is a shower. I mean, I've been in a, a lot party. of ten to fifteen million dollar range houses, but I'd say Tony Robbins has to be north of fifty million. Now, yeah, yeah. I think he paid like mid twenties for it, but and then he then, then he, he improved it. Yeah, yeah then he yeah. did the whole underneath. Well, it looked which is, awesome, but it was just like was kind of somewhat normal. But then there was that underground that yeah. just was like what? That yeah, was, that had to been the most. That had to been the most epic house that I. I'd, I'd is the only way to get to the no? There was a door. Never mind. It wasn't just the slide. Oh, and the bat back. Yeah. No, there's a house over on top yeah. of it. The yeah. guest house. Mm -hmm. Wow. I went to one that was a $15 million house, and this was like 10, well, more 15 years ago in actually um, Capitola. It was right on the, 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 their yard was the cliff to the, the ocean, had an elevator in it, and it was 15 million 15 years ago. So it's probably a $30 million plus house now. So my mm -hmm. dad also worked on Steve Wozniak's house, but this was in the, mid 90s worked on steve wozniak's house and i guess he had a go-kart track in the backyard and then they had these caves that were built in the backyard for the kids to go through and find Sick. treasure and stuff like that this was in the mid 90s i remember my dad coming <laughs> were home. you guys into like mtv cribs and the rich and uh, lifestyles of rich and famous I, mean, I watched it but yeah 
I, we I need not like, like not hard. I like watched every episode. Of course you did. Yeah, so I was. I like Doug probably did too. Did you watch? Did, were you? Oh, you didn't, huh? No, I didn't. Oh, I'm so disappointed. I never watched MTV. Never did. Well, Lifestyles Rich and Famous. I uh, maybe seen one or two episodes. Wow, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. I, that shocks me actually. Did I you mean Grey Poupon too? <laughs> Remember those commercials? I do. Those commercials were great. Dude. I know. Those were great. Commercials. It's just mustard. Everybody, dude. calm down. What's you know? What's really wild about that? So you do the math. Did you look up? You didn't look up the most expensive house sold in California. What was yeah, it? Yeah, I did look it up. It was. I think it sold for like 170 million or 170 something. 170 million. Now trip on this. Wait, what are the okay. property taxes? So I figured that out. I already for me. did. What is it? So that's that's <laughs> one point seven you. million. A year, so almost so one point seven million a year. Is so the rough is the taxes. So almost two hundred thousand dollars a month, even when your house is paid off. So say you're rich enough to go drop one hundred seventy million, you have no mortgage payment. You are still paying one hundred seventy to two hundred thousand dollars a month to have that property for the. So somebody gives it to you, you're bankrupt. <laughs> Here's a free house. Oh shit! It to you. We got to sell it. I'm going bankrupt already. That is crazy to me. Isn't that wild. Speaking of uh, of craziness with taxes and stuff, do you guys see that? Um, did you see the message that the California sent out over Labor oh Day? Oh my god, for the cars! <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> this hurts my brain so so much. Like I, <sighs> they first they sent out first they signed something that said no electric. Uh, sorry, no gasoline vehicles can be sold after twenty thirty five in California. Yeah. Okay. By the way, this is classic bull crap. Virtue signaling this, politician this crap. sums up like everything Be California's about. Because what they do is they'll pass something that's not going to touch them. It's for the next person to worry about. But yeah. it looks good, right? No, yeah, yeah. we're going to be, we're serious about the climate, whatever. Yeah. Literally, two days later, California sends out a big <laughs> warning to everybody. Hey. <laughs> please don't charge your cars. Oh, please by don't the way, you guys. Please yeah. don't charge your cars don't over Labor use Day. Your vehicles. Because we're going to have blackouts because our power grid can't support it. I'm like, come on, dude. This is like but, comedy. But, but you need to get yeah, an electric vehicle because that's what we have. What are we going to do if that's the deal in 2035? I see a side hustle happening right here. Horses? Like, no. Like, uh, <laughs> driving around in a, a diesel powered generator with the hauling, hauling that so you could charge people's uh, electric cars up all over the place. <laughs> got a big old diesel monster truck yeah, bus. Just, you know, just pick pouring your up. gasoline yeah. in there. Oh, you still want to go to work? Come with me. You know what I feel like is going to happen? They're going to push this so hard and then people are not going to be able to charge their cars because our power grid in California can't support our air conditioning, let alone charging our cars. They're not going to do what's needed to build the power grid. Dude, it's so asinine. So, so why then they're going to make everybody why, ride bikes. Why is that right now? Because uh, typically that's like July. So we that's normally when the-, the There's the, a heat wave, go, heat wave going on right now. Yeah. Oh, there is? Yeah. yeah oh, this weekend's supposed to be like a uh, record temperature. So that's why. So yeah. it is. Okay. So that's why. Because it's yeah. going to be record well, heat. Well, because I just got this message too. I guess our football game is like went from like two o'clock up to like 10 30 oh because the heat because the heat i didn't know that was the case oh so, wow yeah. i didn't know we have a heat wave coming like that right now did you know yeah. that doug yeah i did i oh. think it's supposed to start today actually mm. oh interesting yeah. well right. justin did you play football i know you played football in the heat did you ever play in the snow yeah yeah can i tell you something i don't watch lots of football but when i used to watch football i would watch uh it was what was epic, it called dude. uh nfl films yeah is that what it called when they'd show them playing the football oh yeah you watch snow. like uh Green Bay versus the the Bears. Yeah, dude. Like, dude. And they're breathing through their masks. Yeah, or it looks like, like Buffalo, war. New York, and like dude, all, dude it's, it looks like war. It, it is. It's it's it has a totally different feel. And I actually it's one of those things like you you think it's gonna be miserable, and it is if you're on the sidelines. Let's be honest. Like, if you're <laughs> on the sidelines, you're gonna freeze your ass off and like hate life. But if you're in the game, blast dude. it's just like I mean, because you're moving around, you're you're warm. Uh, I, I'd wear like a specific kind of like undershirt that was would keep keep the heat in. Um, but when you tackle somebody and you get like a patch of snow and you just toboggan their ass like <laughs> for like yeah. 10, 15 yards. And you're just like, yeah. I, I and mean, then you're still sliding. You're like, I got you. You know, you're talking <laughs> shit as you're like sliding the whole time. I imagine it's got to be the closest thing to when you were a kid and you played like mud football. I mean, did you? Yeah. I, that, I love I that as a kid when uh, playing mud football. because That's a lost art. Dude. I mean, it, it's uh, it levels the uh, playing field athletically. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when you're, a, you know, you run super, yeah. super fast. You like, can't cut. It's yeah. So it's field. like everybody's kind of on the same level. Yeah. And so it's, you know, everybody Wait, moves about the same speed. Yeah. Is mud football just football in the mud? Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. when it's raining. Yeah, we would, we would go out. We'd go to elementary school. We used to get we'd... super excited when it get real, like a real big storm. And uh -huh. then the like the, we'd go find a field that is just mostly mud and you yeah. go play football. 
and like you when you tackle people, it's like you call you your friends' sliding. parents. You know, you're house. slipping, trying to get. You're trying to run. Yeah, you're trying to you're running in place. And, you still hit a sprinkler. Oh, that's oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. No, mud, mud football was a blast. Wow, when I was a that's, kid, that's so. a good time. Uh, anyway, hey, um, so uh, I've been getting these Viore slack type pants. What are they called again? The Meta. The Meta. The meta pants. Yeah. You know how many times people have asked me where I get these. Like crazy. People in, keep asking me. In person or in, in person? Oh, yeah. No, because they look like. Well, you, like, look, you look handsome. I know, now. I know. Because yeah. they look like like normal, like They're nice like looking slacks. Slacks. But, but look how stretchy they are. Well, look people is. that have known I you for 20 plus years probably do, think right now times. you're going through a time in your life where you're the best dress you've ever been. Wow, that's very nice of you to say. Yeah. Although, I feel like it's backhanded a little bit. Hold on a second. Wait, wait, wait. Hold let on a second. Me, let, let me unpack that compliment. <laughs> <laughs> let me back up. I miss the alien shirt. I forget so the name of these that I'm wearing right now, but I really like these ones. I, I only have one pair. I need to get another pair of these ones. They have the, they're have they cuffed at the bottom, which no, they don't have a, a lot of them that are cuffed like that. You like that. cuffed? I do. Why? Because that's the style. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> why, so, why you said I'll condescending? It's, it's, <laughs> it's a style dumbass. Yeah. It's, it's, okay. it's, it's, no, no, but why do you? Because you the, these aren't cuffed. Like, there's pants that aren't cuffed. Why do you like cuffs so much besides the style? Well, I'm a shoe guy. And so, like, <laughs> oh, one of the things true. I didn't like about the. You the, don't want to cover the shoe. Yeah, with the era when we were, when, you know, the big, you know, boot cut bottoms or whatever, you know, with the, when we went through that phase for whatever it was. Like, you want to show you don't have cankles like me. That's what it was? <laughs> yeah. Got it. <laughs> Just. Yeah. Just yeah. it has to get boot cut yeah. just to yeah, fit yeah, his ankle. Cut just to like, you know, go all the way down. You know? yeah, don't show you me don't that. You don't have cankles. I'm Your ankles just, are okay. Yeah, I mean, you fine. just got the calves, bro. Just, yeah. Don't let Adam tell you. I have super small ankles. <laughs> yeah, you do. I Somebody can, thought I that can, was- a, I can almost fit my, my, my hand around my dude, ankles. Dude, in jiu-jitsu, how close, how close can you get? Ankle to lock the wow. shit out of you. Mine? Oh, so it's easier with a small on a smaller ankle than it would be well, on you a- You get like the one hand? You well, I just it? feel like it would break. Like somebody could get you there. <laughs> I don't know. I Are I'm your joints smaller than mine? Oh, for sure, dude. Wow. Come on. Can you can you get all can you get your Well, kind of, but maybe, huh? Maybe yours is a little smaller than mine. I right? know. Are you can you get your ring finger there? Can uh, you get the ring I mean, finger? I have I mean our hands are probably the same size, so maybe. That's we'll your middle finger. Man. Can you get your ring finger? Oh, my ring? No. Yeah, see, I can get my ring finger. No. Like really good at it. Speaking of fingers, we talked about this on the podcast. You know if your ring finger oh, is they are, than your index? Is that? the oh, transit that jogger. Oh, transit yeah. jogger. Love That's this, good. especially when I'm in transit. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, if your ring finger is a lot longer than your pointer finger, that means you're exposed to a lot of testosterone in the womb. I've talked about that before. Uh -huh. That keeps getting backed up by studies. Isn't that crazy? So your ring, oh, don't try to shorten your ring finger. <laughs> 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 Just as, oh shit. Here, <laughs> dude. No, really. This, com the, the, the ratio of your ring finger to index finger uh, can predict testosterone. That's, not, that's not one of those urban legends? No, it's like real. The, is that? I mean, isn't that one I mean, too? Yeah, Remember no, you the, got it. No, the distance from there to there. They say no. That's not. That's not. That's not an urban. I don't legend. think so. Yeah. I mean, I've seen you in the locker room, so I don't think. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Hey, wow, I to, Doug. I have to make a quick apology here. Okay. So, um, little self realization. Sometimes you have these or whatever. Yeah, I told a story the other day of the guy that I kind of punked on the machine because he was oh, sitting no. there oh, texting no. for Did ten minutes. Oh no! Did you see him? I didn't, and but he, I'm, I'm going to apologize when I do because I thought about it. I thought about it. You ever tell a story and as it's coming out of your mouth, you're like, man, I sound like an asshole. Okay, that was me. <laughs> so as I'm telling the story and laughing about it, I'm like, man, I kind of feel like a dick because obviously this guy, he's all masked up, gloves or whatever. He's scared, right? He's scared of people being around him, yeah. but he's got the courage to go to the gym. He's in there working out. He's taking forever between sets. Who knows why? He looks like he was reading or whatever. Fine. And here comes this big, angry hopped up on pre-workout guy. He's like, let me jump in. And he says, no, probably because he doesn't want germs. And I'm like, and then I make him feel stupid. And he gets up and walks away. I feel Aww, bad about it now. Dude. Oh, That's so woke so of you. Sweet, dude. I feel bad. No, come on, shut up. I do. I feel bad. <laughs> I feel like a jerk, oh, sweetheart. Dude. Yeah. I'm supposed to represent, you know. Well, like, I was thinking more along the lines that when you were telling the story, what made you feel that way is you started to piece together the things you were saying about yourself. I was already irritated. I was this and this. Like, I mean, to me, that would be like <laughs> I was the, already apologizing. The, the self awareness yeah, part yeah, would have been like less about the dude. It was more like, oh, well, I guess I was kind of on edge I'm, already. You know it was, what it is? I'm I was looking for a fight. Maybe I, so I, I'm working mm. with someone. Uh, I'm working with someone right now on a weekly basis to just try to become a better person, right? And one thing that I'm realizing is I'm just generally an anxious person. I just, I just generally tend to have this level of anxiety energy that's kind of high. Mm. So when you throw like time, uh, like time constraints and caffeine on top of it, plus the fact that I might, you know, workouts to me are slightly Some sacred. How, a little how bit often of a, are you working with this person? Once a week. Oh, once a week. Mm -hmm. I would love to hear like cool. 
like uh, breakthroughs like mm. uh, that you get or you hear. I mean, that's uh, that's one of them. Really? I'm just generally an anxious person. Oh, really? Yeah, I just have this general level of. Now, how did you guys piece that together? I mean, well, I kind of pieced it together myself, but talking with this, talking with her over and over again. I'm I, I'm becoming more self aware of my physical states. So okay. So long story short, I don't feel things in my body, and what I mean by that is I'm very cognitive, but I don't feel feelings in my body. So you guys have you guys have commented on how when, when no matter what's going on in my life, we turn on the cameras and I can turn on you know boom podcast intro do the thing whatever, mm -hmm. and I've developed this this. I, whatever you want to call it, this ability since I was a kid for a variety of different reasons. I don't necessarily want to go into, but, and so what happens, I numb, I don't feel here. I can think, Oh, I'm sad. Oh, this is hard. But the only feelings I feel are happy, like happy, love, angry, and that's it. Sadness. I can, and there's been moments in my life where I've wanted to cry. Like there's something really sad going on and I, I can't, I can't mm. just doesn't happen. But you, you like, if my kids do something loving to me, I can get emotional. So there's only certain emotions that I physically feel. So that's a breakthrough. Now, what is, uh, what is her take on that? Is she say it's really important that we get in, in touch with all the different emotions? Yes. That's how you and process so a lot of them. And, if, and you need to be able to process them through. Otherwise, they can build up and cause problems. Or other people can't connect to you. Hmm. Because there are, lots of people read you based off of your body language and what you're feeling. Not just your words. I'm really good with my words. I can explain I'm feeling this particular way, but if I want to connect with my kids, for example, better, they need to be able to see the, and feel my emotion, aside from just anger, love, and happiness, like sad, distress, vulnerability. So which one of, of the emotions mm. do you feel that you struggle the most with connecting to? Oh, boy, sad, for sure. Oh, sad. Yeah, I don't feel, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't feel it physically. So, especially when it's really bad. And then uh, any exercises that she's given you or does she tell you to how to get in touch with being sad? Like, does she force you to like, let's go through something that was sad and traumatic in your life and let's... Well, I'm going to start doing something called EMDR, which is going to help uh, with that. Are you guys familiar with that? So like a new dance? With yeah, drugs, it's, it's, yeah. It's a new dance that the kids are doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually... That's I, exactly what went through yeah. my head. No, I don't know. It's not uh, EDM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very close though. <laughs> There's this... So in, I'm not super familiar with it, but what it does is it allows the parts of the brain that develop these patterns that become second nature. It allows you to move that processing to other parts of your brain so you can kind of re rewire. Now, I'm not an expert on this, and I don't know a whole ton, so I'm probably mischaracterizing it, but there, I'm going to probably try some of that. But really, step one was just being aware of that and mm. then trying to kind of feel you know, be aware, like, how does that feel when you're sad? Is this why I oh. got so many DMs yesterday? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, dude. my God. I got crying, a bunch to tell you that. Emojis. And yeah. Oh, see, look, Doug, pull it up. What does it say there, Doug, about EMDR? It's called Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. That's the EMDR. Yeah. So you're going to take a supplement that's supposed to help you? No. Why do you think it's a supplement? Oh, I thought you said that's, that's what I thought you said. You no, 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 no. It's, oh. it's like you, it's like. It's a I, method. I haven't done it yet. But there's different ways of doing it, like where you'll hold these two handles that buzz, and then you'll go through, I don't know, a memory or something, and then the buzzing brings processing of the brain to a certain place. I have I, I need to remove. Oh, I can't it. wait to hear. It. Yeah, please share with us. Yeah, I, 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 I start uh, crying on the podcast. Yeah, no, also. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I'm, crap, I'm Sal, super, stop. You know, there was a point in my life where I actually wanted to be like a therapist. Of I course. Thought, yeah, I totally wanted you to. Know, be a therapist. Uh, you, you I know, I can see that. Dude. You know, people who have who've had to process the most uh, challenging trauma and stuff typically like to go in that space. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I, just I was, like fitness people with body image issues, right? Yeah, very mm -hmm. similar. I was super. I was super intrigued by, and I still am today. Like I always. I mean, I feel like there's so much to learn. And I absolutely think that self-awareness has to be one of the single most powerful yes. things that you can develop. I yes. mean, that yes. carries over to all aspects yes. of your life. You want to be a better father. You want to be a better yes. husband. You want to be a, a better coworker. You want to be more successful. Like developing self-awareness has to be at the top Agreed. of things that you because can work there's, on. Because what it is, is it's not just, it's what it's not what you what you know that you need to work on. It's what you don't even know that you don't know. That's right. Yeah. That's the, that's the self-awareness part. Yes. It's, it's, and then you have these it's transformative because you wouldn't have thought of it yourself. You, you just don't know that you don't know. Yeah. And then when it comes to you, like, Holy shit, I'm like that. I yeah. do that. Oh God. And everything starts to make sense. And then you work on it, you process it and you become a better person. But this woman knows how to motivate me. I'll tell you, she really knows. Oh really? Yeah. Because otherwise I feel like it's a superpower. Like, yeah, cool. I don't feel sad in my body. So now <laughs> what, you know, that's, yeah. that's how I get through to, you know, whatever. And she's just like, um, 
it, it'll make you connect. It'll make your kids connect with you more. And I'm like, oh, well, you know what to say, yeah. don't you? Okay, fine. Yeah, but to <laughs> your point, this. though, many mm-hmm. times the things that you that are the deepest issues like that become superpowers. Yeah. You've, we've learned you've learned to adapt yep. and overcome. Well, that's what they are. They're yeah. adaptations. Yeah, but they can become maladaptations because then you apply sure. them to everything. You know, so. But it also is what makes it very difficult for a lot of people to want to dig into it. Of course. Because it's like, oh, that's what made me successful. Why would I want to stop doing that? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Or why would I want to give that trade up? Yep. And so it's hard for someone else to come in and tell you like, or oh, you should af- really work on that. Or you're afraid. What is going to be on the other end of that? Who right. am I going to be? What's right. going to happen? Right, right. And um, and again, it's uh, like I said, she knows how to motivate do you, me. Are, do you see her on same day, same week? Yep. Or, so what day do you see her? So I know when to ask. Huh? Because I, <laughs> no. I know I'm going to have to pull it out of you all the time no you're not no like, no i'll tell you off off the off the, off the podcast no i want to know on the podcast your audience is going to want to know too why no, you don't doing get that. messages and shit from people <laughs> <laughs> you How mean like the messages you, you yeah. mean like the messages justin and i got all day yeah, yesterday man, like those fun. messages <laughs> yeah, i don't want to see a bunch of dudes crying you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just not my i thing. did a story where I, I took a picture of justin and i said he's having trouble feeling his feelings can you please send the pictures <laughs> Like yeah. men stuff. Oh. So you got a bunch. Did you get DMs too, Doug? Uh, a couple. Oh, man. Yeah, I got a bunch. I got, I got a ton. You I know what's even funny? I got ones that were people that had never even messaged me before, but messaged me because <laughs> Yeah, me too. Of, but messaged me because of that. That's such compelled. a good time. Uh, yeah. I, I too, love it. No, you got to look, look, here's the deal. I think um, self awareness is important and you only grow from being uncomfortable. So the reason why we stay away from like trying to become more self aware is because it's uncomfortable as shit. It's really uncomfortable, but how else are you going to grow? You don't grow otherwise. Yeah. Otherwise, you just stay where you're at. And if you want to be a better person, like you know, you, you got to seek that shit out. So, yep. That's you all. But examine it examine all areas. It ain't easy. I'll tell you that much. Uh-huh. But nothing drives me like my kids, man. I'll tell you, uh-huh. just to be a better dad and you know, a better partner, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know that that's that'll drive the shit out of me. Yeah. You know? Doug, what were our commercials today? Oh, we have Caldera. Actually, I was going to ask you about your skin since you fasted, because oh. you know how you notice changes in your psoriasis when you fast. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I actually was not happy with that. It didn't do anything. I, I didn't see as much of an improvement as I thought. I definitely, like, I did not see it get any worse, for sure. Uh, but I actually was kind of excited to see, because I hadn't done 72 hours before, and I thought, oh, I wonder if my skin's going to, like, really clear up. It's got nothing in yeah. my system. And uh, it, it really didn't. It, no. Not like I, not like I would have anticipated. I was really hoping for that. You look, and I'm not saying this just because you gave me that weird compliment earlier. You look healthier than you've been in a long time. So I think it's a combination of that, that workout that you're doing, and you're doing your nutrition. I, I mean, I do feel. I mean, those are all true, right? Okay. So like my 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 diet is more dialed uh, right now and today, or even in the last month than it has been in the previous couple of years. So I'm I'm the most dialed in I've I've been in a long time. Um, I'm back to being pretty damn consistent training wise i mean really consistent is that why i saw four plates on the bar out there i did although i did strain my hand oh Oh, come on adam i I told you just a minor strain (laughs) and i and i didn't work through it it. like i was doing i i hadn't uh you know i told you dude i knew you had the pre-workout you're gonna hype her on the podcast it was just 405 dude i just i thought i would be fine you haven't done that and i was working triples so i wasn't even going like to failure on it at all and uh, it was the second or the third time I did it, and uh, just a little, you know, little twinge in my minor, in my, yeah, real minor, okay, real okay, minor. Like okay. it, it's, it's, uh, it's nagging today, but I could still go do. I'm still good, and that, and I put it down to that. I'm like, okay, I knew it because I saw you. You, you took, you took pre workout. Yeah. You were all hyper on a yeah, podcast. Yeah. You were all excited about your workouts. You're looking good. You know what was? Even, I heard the music. I saw you with the headphones. I said, this guy is gonna go too hard. You know what? Mm-hmm. Even bigger asshole move. I didn't even like really prime and warm up. Oh, Shame. what a terrible, yeah, terrible training. I mean, it just like yeah, just, I'm gonna. Have, you know what, Justin? We need to start training. Out. I guess we can't should, do it. Sometimes, I, sometimes I feel like we have no business talking about fitness on this podcast. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Don't even take my own goddamn advice. You know what I'm saying? So, so tell me about the, the the top like four or five things you've done for psoriasis because every time you talk about it, we get DMs. There's a lot of people who struggle with. If top four or five. Okay, so the top things that I've I have done, uh, vitamin D was a big thing for me. Obviously, avoiding the foods that like I definitely think that uh gluten and dairy tend to aggravate it. Okay. Okay. So so that's first, right? Avoiding that. Vitamin D slash uh sunshine, 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 sunshine. Mm-hmm. Uh, or if I don't get that, then the the juve light. So I use the uh, the juve light right. a lot for that. And then the the Caldera serum. 
So the serum is now replaced. So I used to use uh, the cort cortisol creams or the, oh, like the, the steroids. Uh, yeah. The, oh, wow. The creams that they give you that's like 1% something steroid cream or whatever. Uh, and I quit using that and I just use the serum now. And so that has been a big one for me. And I, I think that I would notice with the, the steroid creams, they, they tamp it down faster. Like I see a response, like the next day I can tell it's yeah. cleared up more. The serum, I don't see like this drastic way, but it, it keeps it, it keeps it down and it keeps it from getting really dry like that. And I just got to drop like one little, let those drop the serum. And so the oil spreads so well. Yeah. So like one little drop on that and it'll it's really really good. Yeah. Um but I I I use the serum for that like directly on my psoriasis and and my cuz I have it on my head and I have it on my legs really bad. Um and then I use their the cream. I don't know what the cream is called. What's the what is the uh the one in the is, little Is it the base layer? Oh, yes. Yeah, that's it. Yes. Yes, the ba I use the base layer the most. Really? Like, yes. I, I So we're we're Jessica and I are serum all all the way. We, so I was originally, because that's what got introduced to me first, yeah. but the base layer is the business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I like when I wash my, do you use that, Doug? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I, I love it too. That's my favorite product. So that's that the have. daytime and the wet serums at night, or you guys do both? I don't, okay, so I know, and we talked about it before, like- Well, I, I don't mean, care what the, supposed to be the- whatever. Yeah, my my routine is uh, every every morning when I get out of the shower, because I have the uh, the other stuff I, that I keep in the shower, so I wash my face with yeah. the, I'm so bad, right? I'm selling their product. Clean slate. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Doug. So- <laughs> <laughs> so, just sorry. Chairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I so I use the the clean slate in my shower every 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 morning and night. I use it and wash my face. And then when I when I get done and my and I dry off, then I use the base layer. Okay. And that's how I put on. And then again the serum. You'll see me put on my psoriasis, and then every once in a while you'll see me. You put that on. I put on my face. Yeah, I put on before we podcast sometimes on my face, and then at night I do the base layer again after I shower at night. Yeah. I do it again. I I never used anything on my face. Now I use it re regularly. I never never put nothing. I have naturally oily. Skin I mean, I had them. never in before before Caldera. I had never had experienced anything that like. I can see a difference yeah. immediately. Yeah, I know. Like, a, I can literally look, put it on. It's all spermidide for me. And see. No, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, Justin, you spermidine? Yeah, spermidine. I know all this stuff is so foreign <laughs> to you over there, guy. It's just, it's, Do you even own a lotion bottle? Yeah. <laughs> Do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Quick answer? <It's> no. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, wow, your hand is so yeah. soft. No, the only one is like, it's my heels, dude. Like, I, like every now and then, like, it's Bro, just, so a, bad that they crack, and I'm like, fuck, this hurts. I gotta do something. Then I intervene. What? with what? like what? serum or whatever the Why hell Why are you else? such an angry old man already? Yes. <laughs> I, swear ah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. I don't know. One hundred percent. If a kid drives by your house yep. going too fast. Get out my yard. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> As he's oh, drinking oh. out of his hose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get out my yard. Yeah. In my, uh, uh, whatever you call that. Robe. robe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you have a robe? Free balling. Yeah, I got a robe. I'm a big too. robe guy too. Robe too. Yeah, yeah. I got a Coffee big, and robe. I got a big ass robe. I look like a, I look like a king from Lord of, from like Lord of the Rings. I do too. But it's, it gets so hot so fast. So that's a, I, I have one yeah. just like that and it is the most comfortable thing ever, but it's, it's almost too warm. Oh, I get hot. Yeah. Yeah. Katrina time. ends up, cause she's cold all the time. So she ends up wearing it more than I, I wear it because it's like, but it's great though if I want to go sit on my balcony when it's like yeah. really cold at night uh -huh. and then just wearing that thing, it's like really nice for that. But in the house, it almost gets too. Yeah, I ought to take it up to the, yeah, the truck house. Boxers out there, you know, just, like just outside your boxers. Out. Yeah, dude. You know, yeah, the hearts. Yeah. Check this out. There's a company we work with called Masszymes that makes digestive enzymes for athletes and people who eat high protein diets, low carb diets. Basically, people interested in performance, fitness and health. Did you know that you lose enzymes as you age? This can affect digestion and nutrient assimilation, okay? But taking digestive enzymes, the right ones, can help you absorb and utilize and break down proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. This company is amazing. People love their product. Go check them out. Go to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump, and then use the code mindpump10 for 10% off any order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Cole Kosnick. Is it true that your body can only absorb 30 grams of protein in a sitting? Yeah, I just, I, you know what I picture whenever somebody asks this question? Like uh, like a caveman, you know? Yeah. He hunted, he killed a thing, and he eats the stop. Yeah, yeah. We cannot eat oh, no more. Just leg. Just leg, <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. You know, this is a good example of what I said earlier in the podcast about the supplement side of the industry, uh, how information gets filtered through it. 
this is a myth and it was promoted largely because it's putting more than 30 grams of protein in a protein bar makes them taste disgusting. A scoop of protein powder is about 30 grams. You're not going to fit more protein in a scoop. And so they came up with this lie and it's not true. You can definitely absorb more than 30 grams of protein in a sitting. What, what determines what you can absorb or not or whatever is your digestion. Yep. So if you eat more than 30 grams, you find digestive now, issues. Well, now, now that being said, you know, let's say when you eat, you know, 90 grams of protein in one sitting, it messes with your digestion. Is some of that not getting absorbed? Like, let's say if someone- I like, mean, if you got it, real bad diarrhea, maybe. That's what I mean. Let's, like, let's say that happens. Like, I mean, I, I, that's happened to me before where I eat something that is too too much like dairy and too yeah. much protein all in one shot. And I'm like, I'm, on, I'm in the restroom right afterwards. So now I know, you know, my body is still getting the calories because- I mean, otherwise you would never put on any body fat. You could eat as much, uh, overeat as much protein as well, possible. Well, I mean, in, but ext in extreme cases, when people have extreme digestive issues, they do have trouble gaining weight uh, because they everything they eat they, it goes right through them. But I mean, that's an extreme case. Um, if you eat 90 grams of protein and you digest it fine, you're absorbing all 90 grams. It doesn't happen instantly. It's got to get broken down, goes through the system, and you will absorb all that. I routinely eat, routinely eat, 70 to 80 grams of protein at a meal. It's, my dinner typically is around that. Yeah, but I think the, the 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 more important point to make is what I was just asking about that. So you, you're you fine. You don't have any, you don't, yes. you're not. But if, what if you're somebody who does eat north of 40, 50 grams of protein or 30 in this case is what they're asking. You eat, you know, 35 or 40. And every time you do that, you notice you have to rush to the bathroom. Yeah, I mean, then you just, you, you, that's always number one, right, is your health. So that should determine- it's number two. Yeah, thank you, Justin. <laughs> 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 Boom, nice. <laughs> that that would determine kind of what you should and shouldn't eat more than anything else. Yeah. But all things being equal, this is a total myth. You absorb all the protein that you eat, all things being equal, um, whether it's at once or broken up. Now, there can be arguments as to why you might want to break up Protein servings, it could help maybe with satiety, maybe with behaviors. There might be a performance benefit to eating protein every four hours or so, um, in which, but it's a small benefit. But you know, this may be the case for high-level athletes. Or if you're eating 250 you know, grams of protein a day, well, you're going to probably want to eat five or six servings of protein at 50 grams or so. But this is a total myth, and it was yeah. it was literally put out because – if you buy a protein powder, a protein bar, I should say, 30 grams is about the cutoff. More than that, it's going to taste gross. Mm -hmm. It's going to be big. It's going to be heavy. Yeah, you know that's where it came from. Yes. Yeah, because it's, I mean, it's, they had to have a specific number and to standardize that, you know, it, it came from the supplement industry. It did. So it's like, it, <laughs> there wasn't like this crazy study where they all of a sudden had this epiphany that 30 grams was the number that you could only absorb. There's so many other individual variances to consider. Now, do you do you think there is a sweet spot for the general population of like, because you got to think that there's a tipping point for almost everybody. Like you're, of course, you know, at one point it's going to mess your digestion up. I mean, if you try and sit down and eat a, it's just know, too much anything. Thing. Right. Yeah. So exactly. I feel so. like you could train yourself too, though, like in terms of like um, uh, introducing more um, protein meals that are like a little bit higher in protein, like like gradually. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm sure you, you can, can even absorb you more can. at that point. And so it's like so I noticed that I noticed the type of protein I, is what matters for me more than else. Like oh, I could really? eat I could eat a two pound steak and be fine. No problem. No mm -hmm. problem. But if I were to have like two, like if I were to put four scoops of whey protein in yeah. a shake. That I would one hundred percent the dairy. You know, I would one hundred I would one hundred percent be on the toilet yeah. like right away after that. So, I guess for me, for trying to answer this question, someone was like, yes, this is largely a myth and made up f from the supplement industry. But also, the most important thing for you to pay attention: forget the grams of protein, but pay attention to when you push certain types of proteins to certain levels. Do you find yourself? with diarrhea on the toilet right afterwards. Yeah. And then that's your indicator that you probably should scale back or, or, on that or, or yeah, pair or it with something else. Protein, yeah, yeah, or yeah. switch your protein. Or, or gas or flatulence that's really bad or bloating or constipation. Like these are all signs that you need to change something in your diet because it's affecting your digestive poorly, digestion poorly. And when your digestion's off, everything's off. People need to understand this. Inflammation is up. Your hormones will get affected negatively. So it's a big deal. Digestive enzymes, by the way, can help quite a bit. I was bit. just going to ask you that. Yes, yeah. they can help quite a bit. So, and, and really, digestive enzymes become more valuable. Well, when people have gut issues, digestive enzymes are, are like- Life savers. Uh, they're money, right? Yeah. 
But if you're um, a high level athlete, you're eating a very high protein diet. Like I weigh 200 and right now about 205 pounds. If I were to eat 205 grams of protein, which I, I try to hit most of the time, but usually I fall right around 170 or so. But if I hit over 200, it, it can get a little high for me and digestive enzymes make a big difference for me. They help me break it down and, and people will find this. When that's the this. mass enzymes, right? Yeah, that's the, the company we work with. That's the best. So, wh so uh, when do you take that? Like right before your meal? Right with the meal. Yeah, two oh. two capsules right with the meal okay. and then I'm set. Okay. Next question is from Gregor22. What are your thoughts on tri-release proteins? Are they a gimmick or do they have legit what the hell is benefits? That? Yeah, please what the hell is that? Okay, so... <laughs> so so protein powder. I love when people ask questions about stuff. I have no idea. About. Right, so, <laughs> I so, haven't heard this one yet. No, no. So when I explain it to you guys, okay. you guys will be like, oh, I've heard that before. Okay. So when protein powders really became, and that's one of the largest sellers in the supplement space, small margins. Oh but my is, God. Is it what I think it is? Where it's like, it's uh, it's like the slow digesting protein. Correct. Also, the, <laughs> correct. I just oh. all combined. You hit the, you hit the nail on the head. Caffeine way. You gotta love What's the marketing, the dude. You, you gotta, gotta love you, the, you hit the, you hit the nail on the head. So, <laughs> so be, the protein is a huge, if, if not the largest segment of the so supplement stupid. industry. It's how you attract your customers. And you talk to people who own supplement companies will tell you, you don't make the money off your protein powder, but that's how you get your customers. Then you make the money on the other stuff with the larger margins. So it's a big market. How do you outcompete other protein powders? If I got whey, you got whey, mine's isolate, yours is isolate. Like, uh, like how do we compete? Well, then we start talking about things that make don't make a difference. Like, well, mine absorbs faster. It breaks down faster. And you know that anabolic window post-workout, which is mm -hmm. really a myth. Well, since mine absorbs faster, it's better for you. And then another guy comes out and says, well, you know what I have? I have casein, yeah. which casein absorbs so, slower. Slow it down for at nighttime. You yeah. take it before bed, so you got protein all night long <laughs> while you're in bed, you know? And so, and then someone might be like, well, what about in the middle of your workout? What about a protein for Dream that? So, gains. so try release is just a gimmick. It's basically <laughs> a blend of proteins. One's supposed to be fast release, one's supposed to be moderate release, one's supposed to be slow release <laughs> to give you, I guess, the best <laughs> protein, Ooh. which is bullshit. If protein powders, what you want to look at is digestibility. That's most. That's number one, most important. Then look at essential amino acid content. High essential amino acid content makes a protein gram per gram more effective. Okay, um, but all. But besides all that, if your protein is really high, then a lot of this doesn't matter. Like if you take whey protein, you take plant protein, you take collagen protein, but you all eat a super high protein diet. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You're all getting the, the all the amino acids that you need. It makes a difference when your protein intake is lower. But this whole like fast release, slow release, whatever, no, doesn't make any difference whatsoever. All things being equal, the, probably the best protein gram per gram is whey and egg and animal proteins are in that category. But whey and egg protein are, are some of the best. They're high in essential amino acids, high in branched amino acids. But again, if your protein intake is high, it doesn't matter. And then release like how fast they release in the system. Don't don't worry about that. What are they going to come up with next? I have no idea. Next question is from Kingsy31. I treat static stretching like trigger sessions a couple times a day for the specific muscles I'm stretching. Is this a good or bad thing? This is a hack. By the way, this, this frequency hack that we do with exercise, mm -hmm. you can apply to almost any physical adaptation. Mm -hmm. So like mobility, you could do, you know, three 45-minute mobility sessions a week, or you could do, you know, three five-minute sessions every day spaced out. The frequent mobility sessions are going to get you there faster. It's just, it's just, and this is true for stretching too, for static stretching as well. This is such a hack that I sometimes wonder if I would have made the progress that I did on my ankle and hip mobility as much as I did if it wasn't for me teaching Orange Theory. Because you had to do it in every class? Yes, oh. because it became this ritual that anytime I would send. So part of the class, there's these these like uh, two-minute and three-minute runs or whatever. That you, you It's like the class is very like, you know, bang, 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 move, move, move. And I'm, I'm coaching and talking. And then there's these moments where it's like I set them off and I let them do something. And it's always like you know, no longer than three minutes, normally somewhere between one and three minutes. And so, and at that time, I really don't have anything to do other, other than maybe check form. And if I have an advanced class or it's an easy movement, I don't have much to do. So I made it a habit that every time I had those one minute, three minute oh. breaks in the class every day, all day, 
I would just get down and do like a little combat stretch or get down and I would drive my knees forward over my toes, like just, you know, staying kind of active and moving and just doing that. And I think that that is what progressed me so fast and so far with, with that. And I always wonder like, man, I wonder if uh, I would have had the discipline to really make it that regular had I not had like a little ritual. Well, yeah, because you're, you're, what you're trying to get is CNS adaptation. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get your, your central, because, okay, what determines whether or not a muscle fires well or relaxes well, right? Allows you to stretch it. It's your central nervous system. Yeah. And your central nervous system responds really well to frequent practice. So this I learned about from Jessica with static stretching. So Jessica... In her past life, she 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 had she was married before her and I got married. So she and obviously divorced. That's how we got married. But anyway, she was with a gentleman who worked for Cirque du Soleil. He was a um, uh, performer, and she was just the wife, you know, married to him. So she followed along. Eventually, she worked for Cirque du Soleil as well, and she made friends with the people that did the silks. So the silks are those long fabric things that you climb and do. And she was so fascinated with it. She was not an athlete. She was not athletic. All she did was running at this point. She did nothing else. And she, she said, I want to try this out. And she was became obsessed with it. And she said, she goes, Sal, I would do static stretching five times a day, 10 minutes. Anytime I had a second, I'd get down on the floor and do static stretching. Nope. She went from not being able to touch her toes to, and I'm going to get a picture so we can put on this episode. She would do a hanging splits with the silks or bend herself backwards and became hyper flexible from this method right nice. here of this frequent daily, you know, stretching. And she's like, if you want to get flexible, practice stretching throughout the day. Don't do like two one hour sessions. It's not nearly as effective. Yeah. I'm with you guys. However, the static stretching part, I'm a little hung up on only because, um, what's your desired outcome? Like, what do you actually do? Because in terms of replacing that with mobility, uh, sure. movements, that would be my, preference and only because um in terms of like prepping me for other movement and getting me uh access and strength uh in in that range of motion if you're trying to just access you know further ranges of motion and to be able to place your body in those positions i think static stretching is amazing for that uh and also correcting you know posturally you know getting you in better alignment uh, but in terms of like where we're at now, in terms of like differentiating static stretching with mobility, with dynamic stretching, oh, so my is preference superior. is mobility. So yeah, I, I agree that mobility is superior. What I found was it was just easier to commit to the static. It was like, yeah. it wasn't, so all I would do is like literally just get down and sit in the position. Yeah. And just you know, so but you like, also you also throughout the week did mobility and, and connected. That's right. That's right. That's what she did because she also practiced. And she was this, active with it, right? Yes. Yeah, so so be, that's the difference. I'm trying to. So she would get. So she learned how to static stretch from the Russian performers in the Cirque. Yeah. And these were, I mean, they were hardcore and they were brutal. And she said you would get in a stretch, and then they'd make you fire your quad and pull your leg up or push down against it or yeah, they so grab your like foot. more like PNF. Yes. Yeah. And so, and she didn't know any better. She just did what they, what they taught her yeah, and what yeah. they told her. And so she got this incredible flight. And then of course she practiced the silks, which you have to be, you have to be active. Well, you I mean, this person work. is combining yeah. it with our training programs, right? So they're, it's, they're, they're putting it to work. Yeah. Too, you know what I'm saying? So, oh yeah. Um, the only time this will be a bad thing is if you're hypermobile. I would not, yeah. want someone hypermobile sure. doing sure. lots of stretching. I mean, I just, I mean, I 100%, I think we're all on the same page with, with always promoting mobility, but it is definitely a lot easier to convince someone to get down and sit in a, in, in a 90, 90 stretch or whatever like that while you're watching TV yes. or talking mm -hmm. or something like that than that, like an actual mobility move or whatever. Um, but yeah, ideally you do both, but the, the, I think the point you're making that I think is so true is just like, you know, a lot, there's a lot of people that like to take like a yoga class once or twice a week, yep. an hour yeah. of some good static stretching. And if you are trying to improve uh, range of motion, you are far better off, you know, picking one or two movements, you know, in my case, the combat stretch, throughout the day and just doing it three, four or five times yep. a day, every day in yep. little two minute shots. Yep. Than you are sitting for an hour. One You'll day. notice I've done little stints of like this. a huge difference. And I'm getting motivated actually right now to try and do more of this, but. I noticed my flexibility dramatically improve that day. Yeah. And then the next, it's like you could see the improvements happening so fast uh -huh. with this particular adaptation because it's all CNS. CNS can adapt yeah. so quickly when you do it right. Anytime I can hang on a bar or like in, in the doorways, I'm always like promoting mm -hmm. that position oh. where I'm getting open again just because it's it, it pays dividends.
Next question is from Fulvio Castle. What are your thoughts on incline versus flat close grip bench press for tricep development? Oh. Yeah. I picked this for you, Adam, because oh, yes. you're the first person that I ever heard say that they, they – first off, I've never seen – I'd never done or seen an in, a close grip incline press. The only way I'd ever seen it or done it before was flat. Yeah, You're the first person that ever said, oh, it's superior on the incline. And I've tried it and I do like it a lot. I love it. Yeah, I do. It's one of my explanations for it is that it, if because you're on the incline, it, it increases the amount of elbow uh, flexion and extension, which is where the tricep comes from. So it encourages this like combination skull crusher press versus here on the flat, I might have a tendency to not do lots of elbow flexion and bring my hands a little too low and get more shoulder. That's that that's what I it get is the it. it's yeah. the angle. I just the it feels way more comfortable on the incline than it does on the flat. On the flat and also too the the um you know when you're pushing on the flat bench you tend to kind of like the shoulders kind of roll forward and push yeah, yeah. there where the incline kind of promotes that the shoulders staying back and then really extending with the, so I fell in love with it and it, um, you know, and there's uh, which one, which one of those internet trolls was talking shit about us saying that, uh, incline or I mean, yeah, the close grip bench press is a terrible tricep exercise. Oh, did somebody say that? Yeah. Yeah. I think it was that one clown. You always get in a fight with the one that uh, <laughs> who cares? Yeah. What's his name? The, I'm trying the, to be a nice guy. You know now. what I'm talking about? The, the, the one that I think blocked you later on. Oh, the I don't body, say steroided out. Dude, uh, that's yeah. uh, We've given him using enough the attention. studies all the time. Cause what they, they, they make these cases that, you know, these isolation exercises like a skull crusher or tricep push down activates more the Come tricep on. than this compound lift. Does. I hate those studies sometimes. I know. And, you know, I was caught in that. I was caught in that same trap that all I did was tricep push down, skull crushers and stuff like that, which great exercises for the triceps. I'm not saying that. But the close grip bench press, in, in particular the incline, put more mass on my triceps than anything else that I did because I could get to a place where I was doing 225 in that position. You and load it substantially. Exactly. And I couldn't, I can't skull crush that. Listen, I can't I, tricep push down. One that. of the only body parts I have where I'm relatively gifted is triceps. And I can tell a dramatic difference when I stop doing close grip presses and dips and just stick to tricep extension, overhead, cable, side, whatever. I can tell. I can tell in my tricep development every single time. So those compound lifts for those smaller body parts, I mean, it's funny because nobody would make the argument for like chest and lats. No, because I could show you the same studies that show you that no, cable it's the fly. Same, it's the same science nerds yeah. that want to use the muscle activation angle always. Yeah. Just like, oh, there's you do a skull crusher or you do a tricep push down and it yeah. lights the triceps up and, and very little anywhere else. Where if you do a flat bench, shoulders get activated, chest gets yeah, involved in there. That's a great point. Like you don't see that with the chest. You don't see that with flies, like versus like a bench press. Everybody knows you build more muscle with a bench press. Yeah. I tell you what, I, you, if you did a really good straight arm pull down or a really good cable fly, it would light up on those studies. You're gonna do. You're gonna build a bigger chest doing that than you are benching, or bigger back doing a straight arm pull down than you are with a barbell row. Right. No, you're right. not. This is the same people that say that deadlifts. Don't build the back, which blows my mind. By the way, deadlifts, pro bodybuilders now are starting to do it. A lot of them. I see a ton of them now. You know why? I see a ton of them. This is just bodybuilding. It's because if a champion does them, then everybody starts doing them. But I think now people are starting to feel and see like, oh, this actually makes a difference. This actually contributes. If you are trying to develop massive triceps and you you absolutely, in my opinion, have to have close grip bench press in there and or dips. Those two movements- Now, I do want to say right. one thing is don't go too narrow. This is the big mistake a yeah, lot of people make. Yeah, because this, width. it'll hurt your wrist. I mean, I, I, I coach shoulder width. Yep. So, we're, we, you know, right, right where you're at, go straight to the bar. That's so, it. Yeah. And then the key is in the elbow ex- extension and flexion. That's such so a good point too, Sal, is. because people get so hung up and like, oh, it's close grip. So how close can I get? No. Oh, and it's yeah, like, and then no, you end up no, flaring no, way out. Yes. It's just like, dude, if you your risk if you are straight on there, I mean, it's yeah, it's weird press. Primarily... Uh, triceps right there. It's such a great movement. It's one of my favorite movements for tricep development. Agreed. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. The rules that apply to somebody who is going from, a man who's going from 20% body fat to 15%, the rules that apply to that person are the same as the the rules that go from 10% to 5%. The difference is everything that we talked about.